it's just a glorified private pilot check ride, right? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here, M0A.com, and you are listening to the Commercial Pilot Podcast, brought to you by our number one rated online ground school. Visit uh, M0A.com to check that out and learn more, and if you want to see inside of that amazing new learning management system you've heard so much about, head over to M0Atrial.com to take a two-week free no strings attached trial of that brand new online ground school, m0a.com to check that out and learn more. So you have heard this phrase, I alluded to it on Tuesday, if you saw our Tuesday video on YouTube and Facebook as well. Hey, it's just a glorified private pilot check ride. Boy, um, that phrase will do you a disservice. Don't let anybody uh, rope you into that kind of thinking because let me tell you something, nothing could be further from the truth. It's not a glorified private pilot check ride. If you don't continue on to CFI, it'll be the hardest check ride you've done. I, um, I don't have a copy of past your private pilot check ride with me, but you can see the, how about we compare just the instrument to the commercial book. I mean, Obviously, if you're listening to this as just a podcast, you can't see my analogy, but if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, it's twice as big to pass your commercial pilot check ride book. It's a, it is a big book. There's so much to know, so much to learn, so much to understand at such a high level, m Nation. That's the biggest part of all this, and that's where people fail to understand that you cannot go into the commercial pilot check ride thinking it's a glorified private pilot check ride. Now, I am I'm rambling a, a little bit here, and I will um, obviously I know you've watched already the uh, the YouTube video, so I'm going to really dive into this and help take our commercial pilot check ride up a notch. You know, you've heard me say this: you don't have to know everything; you just need to know where to find it. That is still very much true of the commercial pilot check ride, but I want to use this as an opportunity more so to dive into the mock check ride aspect of things. I'm reading from past your commercial pilot check ride. Again, you can grab a paperback, an ebook, or what I really recommend is to grab the audio book. Um, you can grab that on Audible, is what I use, but you can do audiobooks.com. Wherever you download audiobooks, you can find it. I personally like Audible. Uh, some people don't like Audible. It's uh, it's an Amazon company, so you probably have an Audible account and don't even know it if you have an Amazon account, so you can hop in there and utilize that. Um, I'm just going to go uh, in no particular order. Typically, a check ride would be very scenario-based, like we've been doing with our online ground school members with these mock check rides we've been doing, and you've experienced the mock check rides on in-flight coffee. Hopefully, you're able to watch those every Saturday at 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time as well as on Tuesdays, we do our ground school member only webinars. If you take me up, if you're already a member, awesome, I'll see you there this Tuesday. If you are not, you can hop in and take a trial. Again, like I said, m0atrial.com to hop in there uh, and see some of those webinars as well. We follow more of a scenario-based type theme in those. Here, I'm just gonna kind of rapid fire work some things. Actually, it works very similar to the audiobook. I'll read the question, let you think about the correct answer, and we'll work through it all that way. So you ready for this? Reading from the book, Aircraft Systems, what is the first indication of carburetor icing? What is the first indication of carb ice? And I'm pausing only for effect so you can kind of think about that answer in your head as well. You ready? I'll read it right from the book and I'll give you the plain English version as well. The first indication is an RPM drop and a rough running engine. Carburetor ice is due to just carburetor design, relative humidity and temperature. Whenever there is humidity, usually around 60% is what you need, and a 40 to 70 degree drop in temperature due to the Venturi effect, carb ice can form. The remedy is always the same. Apply carburetor heat. Apply carburetor heat is always the fix with that one. So anyways, that is a carburetor icing on that one. Let's look at some more here. What are the four cycles of the engine? What are the four cycles of the engine? We know they are the intake stroke, the compression stroke, the power stroke, and the exhaust 
stroke with that. All right, let's dive into, wow, some spatial disorientation here. Hey, what are some optical illusions at night? What are some optical illusions at night? The first one you may know. Gosh, I talk about this one a lot. Autokinesis. What is autokinesis? Autokinesis is if I go out, gosh, I want to talk with my hands. Let me bookmark this for a second. Autokinesis is if I go out, and this could be your homework if you've never done this before. At night, I mean the black of night, not sunset or something like that, it needs to be truly be black of night. Go out and just stare down your street at a street light or a, a neighbor's porch light, but it's got to be 500 yards away. It's got to be a, a long, good ways off. Stare at it for 30 seconds. Don't look like a creep staring at your neighbor, but just go stare at it. That light is going to begin to move and actually kind of flicker in a weird up and down, right and left, even type pattern. Autokinesis happens when I'm on a long 10 mile final, the airport lights are on and the runway all of a sudden appears to move if I just stare at that. The thing I can't do is just stare at those runway lights on a long final like that. Another common one is a false horizon. What is a false horizon? A false horizon is, I mean, truthfully by definition, it's anything that causes me to believe it's the horizon but it's not the horizon. Um, it could be ships on the ocean, stars at night, uh, city lights in the distance. It can be anything that causes me to believe or think it's the horizon when it's not actually the horizon. Let's see, um, can you define the different types of altitudes? You ready? What is true altitude? True altitude is the altitude read off the altimeter when local barometric pressure is set into the altimeter. What is absolute altitude? Well, it's the airplane's height above terrain. So what's another way to say those? Absolute is AGL and true is MSL. Does that make sense to everybody? What is pressure altitude? That's another type of altitude. What is pressure altitude? Pressure altitude, well, that's the altitude read right off the altimeter when I set it to what? Two niner, niner, two. Then what is density altitude? Density altitude is pressure altitude corrected for non-standard temperature. But what is really density altitude in plain English? Density altitude, as I like to teach, is where the airplane feels like it's at. It's how the airplane will perform. If density altitude is two or 3,000 feet, let's just say for easy math, it's 3,000 feet. The airplane rolling down the runway, if density altitude at the surface is 3,000 feet, the airplane's going to perform. It's going to roll down the runway. It's going to take off. It's going to climb out as if it's already at 3,000 feet. My friends, in a naturally aspirated aircraft, meaning it, I, it breathes naturally, normally, without the aid of a turbocharger, what happens to that aircraft, a non-turbocharged aircraft at altitude? You get a decrease in performance, right? All right, how about this one? I just asked this on in-flight coffee earlier this month, if you remember that. There's two types of drag, right? What are the two types of drag? Parasite drag and induced drag. So parasite drag is, and by the way, the next question is what are the three types of parasite drag? Everyone goes, what do you mean there's three types of parasite drag? This is your commercial pilot check ride. This is what we have to step up and work towards now. Parasite drag, that's things like the rivets on the plane. Um, as, as speed increases, parasite drag goes up. Then there's something called induced drag. Induced drag is best explain as a, it's really a byproduct of lift. Induced drag is, is most intense though at the, in like in ground effect and these nice slow uh, air speeds as well. So slow air speeds, high induced drag, high air speeds, high parasite drag. Does that make sense? Everybody following that one. I mentioned there's three types, three types of parasite drag. They are skin, form and interference. So here they are. Skin is surface drag. So this is literally the rivets on the plane, like I explained. Um, form drag, this is drag that the aerodynamic shape of the airplane causes when flying through the air. And then interference drag is, this is caused by the structures attached. Um, where the strut meets the fuselage, that is a type of interference Parasite drag, if that makes sense. And, and by the way, this is all so 
related. Like, yes, at the private pilot level, we asked you the different types of drag. And you could just say parasite and induce, but now it's time to take it to the next level. You have to take your learning up a notch through all of this. It's not enough to just say parasite and induce. It's now another thing to know that there's three types of parasitic drag and you need to be able to explain each of those. It's not enough to know what hypoxia is. I have to know there's four types of hypoxia. It's not enough to know about hydroplane. It's enough to know the different types of hydroplane. At the square root at which your aircraft will hydroplane at based on its tire pressure. That was on my commercial pilot check, right? We have to take our learning up a notch. A lot of this starts with listening to the audiobook and knowing what's in there. Obviously, if you're inside the online ground school, you're also just so well taken care of with all of that. Don't let anybody fool you into thinking this is just a glorified private pilot check ride. because let me tell you something, nothing could be further from the truth. And if someone is telling you that, unfriend them on Facebook. I don't really mean that. I'm sure they're good people. They mean well, but listen to me. I am just telling you, they are doing you a disservice with this. They are doing you a disservice with this. Last question here, then I'll let you get back to enjoying your day. What is CFIT? What is CFIT? I mean, honestly, this could be a private instrument, commercial, CFI. It could be an ATP question, right? This question transcends all check rides. CFIT, CFIT is controlled flight into terrain. Controlled flight into terrain. Plain English, I take a perfectly good airplane and I fly it into terrain. I, I think of the Kobe Bryant accident when I think of something like CFIT. Again, more on that later. But anyways, listen, M Missouri Nation, you are such a blessing to us. Go back, watch this Tuesday's video, more on the commercial pilot check, right? Be watching in-flight coffees, be participating in the webinars, whatever else you can do. Head over to m0alive.com so you can be on the live Zoom mock check right as well this month. There's so many great things happening. If you have a check ride coming up or just want to stay brushed up on everything, mock check ride May, it, well, it was made for you. Congratulations to everybody who's had so much success on their check rides lately as well. Listen, go be a blessing uh, to others as well. Have an amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, the good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you.